All right, I'm back. So, um, like I said before, this will be a um, this will be a late night review of the game against WASD in the week two qualifier tournament, um, playing on Whitemarsh. A bit of a disclaimer is this: this is the strategy we use in tournaments, and it's us against WASD, so it's more specific to them. Um, it might not work in casual, but there's some generic tips here that could be useful. Um, I'm just gonna talk you guys through what I'm doing as a tank and what you could try to doing to maybe improve your gameplay, or at least take a lesson from it. Um, hang on. Right. Please do a duo review. If if I do a duo review with Bird, it's just gonna be shit talking back and forth. All right. So um, let's just start the game up. Actually, before we start, um, or oh, why I keep this running? Oh, actually, I don't know how to start this again. Help, bird! How do you unpause? <laughs> oh, there you go. Whoa, that's a bit fast. All right, so this is gonna be the, a messy video already, but whatever. All right, so before you, every every point, you kind of want to have a gen generic game plan, right? Um, if you just rush a point without knowing what your team is doing, it's gonna end up messy because you don't know don't know where to fall back to, and where the safe zones are. So before each Five, point, you kind of want to have a general idea three, about what your two, team is doing. One. In this case, um, the generic plan was go to the point, go to the left zone, or the left area, and fuck this side. This side was really good for flanking. If a tank is down here, if, let's say he wants to get back up there, you need to walk all the way around this way, and it's just super slow, so you can't really help your team. It's dominated by people like Androxus who can dash up and dash away again. So in general, we were like, you know, fuck that side. This is gonna be our playground. Because it's close to the point, you have good angles on the point, and uh, you, you can you can control the area quite easily. So here we go. So as soon as these gates oh, gates open, you will notice that uh, that's pretty much how it's gonna go down. I think uh, Bird was a shot caller here. He said he told Sun Command to go all the way to the left, me a bit close to the point, and then the other people check on the right side. So as soon as you get to the point, the first thing you want to do, while the speed is up a bit. The first thing you want to do when you get to the point is count how many people are there. Because then everyone on your team knows where they are, they know where they are safe, and they know what to expect. So I'm just going to pause it right here. There's a bit of a miscommunication. I went this way, because I wanted to see how many people are here. With my bubble, I can zone off this entire area, and I can keep my people safe. Some commander went behind me and went up this way, when he really should have gone all the way this way. Which was the plan, because he can just shoot from here. If he gets pushed, he can dash back to us really easily. Um, and he have control. He didn't do that, instead he went here. And the issue with this is that we're all in a clumped up area, really close together. So, as I play this, what you will see is that I bubble, I give my team some space. But in the end we don't really achieve much, because I'm getting poked really hard, because we're not really pressuring them back. Because Sun Commander being up here, all he can really see is people all the way in the back there. So anyone here, has free fire, he's dead going uncontested. Walker went straight to the point. This is generally a decent idea because you put some pressure on them, they need to make a move because you're on the point. If they do nothing, then you win. So yeah, the issue again is here that I got really I got poked really fast here. I got low as hell. So I fell back, I decided to go in the back so I can heal from the heater. In general we're just kinda chilling here, we're just poking away at them. I take way too much damage from the Rookers while I try to hook someone. It, it gets me killed, and from there on it's pretty much just people dying one by one. We should have done it, we should have fall we should have fallen back straight away. We should have ran, which we didn't do, so we all just kind of die one by one. As you will see here. So Commander finally goes to the left, but a bit too late now. So Bird falls back, he knows what to do, he's just running. So Commander fights for a bit too long when he gets out safely I think, so it's all fine. Alright, so now I'm back. I go up with some Commander, because... What the general plan is here, that me and Sun, we stick together. So when I get a hook, he can immediately follow up on it. And I also keep him safe at the same time. Right? And, um... Let me just keep it playing. Also, a good point in chat, you don't really want to hook a tank. Um, especially Rukas is the worst target to hook. I think I did hook a Barrack there, which is kind of okay, because Barrack is squishy enough to get blown up. Oh no, we have Barrack. I was hooking Fernando or Rukas. Then, yeah, that was a bad idea. Never hook a tank if you can hook someone else, because the moment you use your hook, 
as a tank player, you're gonna lose so much pressure on them. Because they, as soon as this guy uses his hook, he's really easy to kill. When he has his hook, he's a fucking murdering monster beast 24-7. Without a hook, he's just a plushy Makora. You can kill him. Alright, so for the retake. We can split up too much. We got two people on the right side. I went all the way left. Um, probably trying to get some value. I should have probably should have been with some commander here. Either he should have been with me or I should have been with him. Either or. Um, let me just play from my perspective right now. Which is number one. So we're just going to fight for the points here. Trying to get some value. I'm just going to try and stay alive. Which I didn't succeed at because again, as you can see, I went all the way alone to the left. My team was on the right side. So they kind of fucked me, they just pushed me, I was dead. It's a bit of a miscommunication, maybe it's just a mis mispositioning for me. But that's how we kind of lost this point. Bunk went to point again to try and cap some. Not really achieving that much because they don't care about the point right now. This is something better teams do. Like, it doesn't matter how many points you have. If you're not capping the point, it doesn't matter in the end. So, Barrick capping right now. WASD is like, fine, we don't give a fuck. We have 93%. We're just gonna kill all your carries. And once we do that, that's when we kill you guys on points. So they're just ignoring the points, which is fine. Bunker probably should, Bunker was probably just on points, so they couldn't cap it. You wanted to make sure that they didn't overcap or win a point. But that's kind of the power position of winning the first point or winning the f initial fight. You get control of the points, and you can just kind of you get that advantage rolling. So now they play it slower. I don't know why the game is slowing down. The bunk is permanently on point because he wants to make sure they can't immediately cap it. Um, I hooked to Rukas here, which is a mistake. He got away. Rukas pr is probably by far the worst target you can hook as a Makoa. Uh, so never hook a Rukas if you can prevent it. Alright, let's just uh, get some point of view gameplay. There we go. I'm just gonna let us roll for a bit. So right now we're just defending. They pushed up really far, even though the switch is that far back. Which is fine because we need to fight them here. In the meantime, the siege is going uncontested. So Ying is just pushing for free. She's putting illusions down so her team can heal. So this is good by WASD, right? They push us. We can't stop the so we can't stop the siege from going for it. So we just kind of fight out. Fernando goes to goes a bit deep. He gets poked down. I think they wipe us here again. If I'm not mistaken. Yeah, so we, this is kind of like a classic brawl. You just try to survive. I hook it all team Marukas, does nothing. So at this point, we were like, okay, we probably lost this push. Because they use their ultis, they got the snowball advantage, and they're doing super well. Um, but somehow we managed to defend. And I think I might be able to show you why. If I slow down a bit, because I don't really remember. Alright, so I go in, I get some focus on me, we got to shoot up. Some commander dies to Bomb King. Straight away, I think he got out traded. Attach the point, get area hook and bomb king. I take the bomb king, which is a fine trade at this point, because bomb king can be insane if you focus on the siege. If he bomb king has free fire, he can just whittle you down. So we're holding the point because we killed the, bo the bomb king, which is the main damage. Bunker and uh, bird and lazy in the back. They clean up the uh, Fernando. And now they don't, now they need to run. They need to fall back. Enemy rampage. So we slowly whittle them down, we start pushing a little bit forward, we take away their area control, and we do this slowly. So as a Makoa right now, you kind of want to be in the front, because I have my hook up. If any carry comes too close to me, I will hook that target, I will kill that target, and that's that push gone. So I'm just trying to look for a target, if I can't find it, I'm just going to hook, try to dismount people, put, apply some general pressure. Yeah, if Makoa dies while he's hooking, uh, he will drop his hook. So I'm just kind of waiting, zoning, looking for an uh, opportunity, shooting Fernando whenever I can, force him back. So now Ying is in the open, I hook Ying, Ying dies, damn, that's the healer, the healer is gone. So if you're playing against the Makoa, you always want to make sure his hook is down once you get in his vision, because he can one-shot you, especially with pluck, which is why I don't understand people go without the pluck. Yeah, what, you sh what you saw just there with the Fernando, which I can't show you because I can't go back in time, if you hooks and shoot at the same time, Sometimes you don't actually hook the target towards you. Which is a uh, bug in the game. Alright, again, getting out of position. Doesn't respect my zoning. Gets hooked, dies immediately, so the healer is dead again. 
from here on out, they can't push anymore. The healer is dead, so all the damage we did to them was more or less permanent. So uh, in the end, we just killed the healer twice, so they couldn't push further. And we got the uh, successful defense. From here, just clean up kills. Yeah, the Savage ulti came to a hook to a window, but that's a bug. That seems a bit awkward. Uh, I'm just gonna keep it running for a bit now. So now we, we, we lost the first point. We're like, okay, why did we lose? Okay, we didn't contest the left point. Lex went all the way left. No one killed him, he went uncontested. So this game we say, okay, because the Lex goes all the way left, I'm gonna meet the Lex and I'm gonna kill him. Because Pokoa more or less is a... Uh, I mean, that's the reason he's always first picked. He can kill anyone in 1v1. Four, three, two, one. So here we go. So this is where I go all the way left. I do believe Sun Commander is behind me. Uh, no, he went middle again. I guess that was the call. I guess Bird went left side with uh, uh, Lazy as well. So from my point of view, I go all the way left. Next like on the left, like we expected, like last time. I just hook him in, and it's an easy kill. That's kind of the power of Makoa with Pluck. You can solo kill everybody. So the Lex is dead. Unfortunately, Fernando kills Bonker. I think Bonker went to the plane again. Get the area hook on bon uh, Bonking after he got uh, feared. And there we go. Two of that damage carries are dead. Are you all behind me? Alright, my bad. Don't run away with me there. From here on, it's just cleaning, cleaning up kills. There's not much happening. Lazy uses ulti. He decided not to go in because he didn't want to die for it. And since you get 30% of your ult back, it's not a big deal. Again, Spunky getting caught by the hook. I guess clean up by lazy afterwards. Um, I'm just kind of holding the left zone. I know my team is holding the right side. So I'm just making sure that this zone area is mine. And anyone who goes here, you know, has to deal with me. Right. So I ulted here with a lot of health. Which is because I had Rukas, Fernanda, and Bonkin on me. And they are all pretty low health. I just wanted to ult and zone them away. And, you know, fight three of them if I have to. In the meantime, someone's holding this side. Bonkin is capping with two turrets up. And Bird is just staying alive and healing. And Lazy died at this point. I think Lazy died zoning. All the more reason for me to ulti because they want to snowball this now. So what happened here, I guess I've got to show you from this perspective. And played a bit slower. I ulted. For them this was secure. Okay, now we need to ulti as well. So Rukas decides to ulti me. Because I ulted. He's then turned away because uh, I think I was behind the wall. Bonking power with out. And at this point my entire team is fighting them. Fernando ulted so they can't die. Bunking also ulted in with almost no health, but Fernando ulted, so it's fine. I hook out the Rukas. Because I, I, I just hooked that general direction. I killed the Rukas. Bunking goes in, trades one for one with Bunker. Fernando goes in, already low health. He's fighting Sun Commander at full health because he had a good position. He just does get a bit fucked up by the fireball though. And at this point, it's a um, tribute 2. Tribute 3, I guess, because Sun Commander is still fine. But Fernando's almost dead. So from my point of view, I need to decide now. Okay, do I go for the Fernando? He's a one-shot, so sure. And before I kill the Ying here, I decided to hook the Lex instead because he's a more immediate threat to my healer. So I'd rather just kill the Lex and clean up that damage. Because solo Ying, what well, can be annoying, she doesn't, she doesn't win against all of us. It's really just deciding who you want to hook first. So we win that point Stop by, you know, some luck and uh, me staying alive. Which is also kind of lucky because the bunking pop hit me out. From here now it's just zoning again. For the zoning, again, same as, as they did when they won the point. You want to push up as far as you can without being in their base. Because then you get the siege moves forward freely and you just get more push off. So me and Lazy holding the left side, while some commanders holding the right side. With that, they can't really push through us. They need to go past us if they want to get to the siege. So we just kind of hold this area for now. So I can get some poke off. He doesn't chase the Fernando. He sees he's low. He doesn't chase for him. He doesn't try to kill him because you don't have to kill them. If they are low and they're healing, that means they're doing nothing. And while they are doing nothing, we are pushing forward. So all you gotta do is keep them busy and keep them away from the siege. This is called forward zoning. So I'm just gonna play it out a bit. Right now I'm just holding the right left side a bit. It's on command and Bunk is now holding the right side. As you can see, the siege has been uncontested all this time because they can't push forward. They will just die. 
Look out, Fernando gets a bit too deep. I hook him, my team cleans him up. Let's go from my point of view again. So right now I'm just trying to zone out this area. So I bubble up with some behind me. Get a hook on the, on the Bomb King. And we start getting the snowball. As soon as you get a kill, especially when the siege is this close to the point, as soon as you get one kill, you kind of want to get keep the kills rolling. Keep the advantage going in your in your favor. Because then, you know, 4v5 is a hot fight to win. So we just try to kill them all, keep pushing, and, you know, as you can see, I think, <coughs> it's going to really make it hard for them to push back. So we get two more kills. Rook is out of position. I'm finding the Rook is a bit. Getting some help on some commander. And it's just Fernando on siege. We also kill him. And just here, they all pretty much died there. I mean, sure they're respawning now, but if Bonkin jumps on the points, like he tried to almost, um, he would just die as well, like he saw. So I kind of the lesson there is if you get one kill, you want to get the momentum. You don't want them to stabilize and get that player back. Nah, no, if you kill one, you kill them all. So the initial kill here on the Bomb King mean, uh, means they lost a lot of damage. So you just push in, kill the rest, and get the uh, snowball going. Uh, all right. I think the next point was more more or less just a stomp, so it's not much to see. Just gonna play from my point point of view. And fast forward to this bit. Point spawning in 15 seconds. Mm. All right. So again, I go all the way left. Five, Fernando. Four, so three, what Fernando did this time was clever. One. Fernando decides to go all the way this side as well, so he can stop me from hooking the legs. So he gets in my face, he's annoying, I can't insta-kill the Lex. So that's a good play by Omri, that's a good read on uh, the strategy. Probably should have done that to set the, first, the time before this as well. But uh, yeah, this is a clever clever play by Fernando. So from my point of view, I just bubble up. I'm like, oh wait, Fernando's here. I respect your presence, I'm just gonna bubble and kinda wait it out. In the meantime, Lazy's finding kills on the right side because, as you can see, three of them are on this side. Bonky and Lex are wasting all that time shooting my bubble. In the meantime, my team is just fighting on this side, 3 against 2. So they are investing all this time to kill my bubble, which achieves nothing. And we just fall back a bit, we're like, okay, you can have this, and Lazy's cleaning up. <coughs> <coughs> Alright, back to Makoa. I hooked the Fernando here. It's kinda like whatever, I just wanted to hook him. I knew his shield was down because he used it. We, did, we get some fog damage on him, which is fine. He gets out. But then Lazy shows up and he's dead anyway. So, but why we now? We already have three kills. I mean, we got the initial kill, then Lazy ulted the Fernando. And from here on up, we're just cleaning up again. We get the advantage. We just push in and we kill them one by one. Helping some commander out by getting the Bomb King off his back. And then getting the Bomb King. And now it's just zoning. We already capped 50%. All we gotta do now is make sure they don't get close to the point again. So we're all pushing up, we're dismounting people. I'm wasting my hook in the Fernando. Find the Lex. I think someone told me Lex is behind, so I roll towards the Lex. I chase him. Taking damage from the Rooks in the back. Wanna make sure I don't die. So I just ulti. Fuck the Mako, uh, fuck the uh, Lex, and we just clean up. And from here on out, it's just clean ups. Because it was hard for them, right? Because we won the first fight, so we already had so much capture on the point. They didn't really have a choice, they had to get to the point fast. And what teams usually do then. They get all stressed out, they they get they lemming the point, and they just die one by one. You know, they lose their teamwork, they lose their composure, and we can just kill them one by one. That's why it's so important to win the initial fight, because then you have that advantage. That's how we lost the first point. They won the point, we were forced to be on point, like Bonke had to be on point, make sure that they didn't cap it, and they could just clean us up because it was 4v5. So that's why the retake is so hard. And as you can see here, we just kind of did it. That's the reason D69 does better against us, because they don't lose composure. They know how to retake a point. They kind of chill. So all in all, that's, uh, that's how that point played out. I, th I think the general lesson there is, um, once you get the point, you want to zone them away. Once you get one kill, you want to keep pushing for the other kills. And you just want to kind of keep each other alive. Help each other out, don't go for the solo plays. I don't know if that was clear or not, that was kind of going through it mindlessly. Didn't think about it too much. I hope it made sense. 